read the Bible with the Holy Spirit showing you. Well, good morning. Um, today we are going to interview a very important and special person in my life. Um, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're coming from around the world. Um, my daughter. And I'm just waiting for her to come on to log in. And she should be here shortly. Wow, praise God. God is good. She'll be sharing her testimony with us today. And I just praise God for her life and all that he's doing today in her life. This is the Vine and Branches Ministry. It's the Living Stones testimonial time. And we bring on all kinds of people to share their testimonies and what the Lord's doing in their life, uh, what he has done, what he's doing today. And we just give God praise and thanks. We serve a mighty God, don't we, branches? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Just magnify your name. Thank you, Lord God, for this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing in our lives. And we just bless your holy name. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear, oh Lord, yes, Lord, I bless your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are great and mighty, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to text my daughter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited. I'm excited because the Lord has done such a wonderful work in her life. And I can't wait for y'all to, to join in and hear about God's goodness and his grace. Praise the Lord. And I know y'all can identify with what she will be sharing in some way or another. You know, we all have a testimony of where God brought us from. And he took us from the ashes and he picked us up and he washed us clean and gave us a new life in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away and the new has come. And we just rejoice in him today. I know for my own life, I was out there wandering on the blackened 
sea of sin. And, and he called me back. And he was faithful to answer my mother's prayers. And he called me back. And he took me out of that life. And he, he made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. And today I am so, so grateful to the Lord. He is wonderful. Well, my daughter says she's just getting some water. Praise God for water. <laughs> I have a sister that always reminds me, drink lots of water. Praise the Lord for sisters who look out for sisters. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just want to say that I love, I love you all, and thank you for supporting this ministry and joining in on the testimonials. So important. The word of God says that as we see that day approaching, that we should gather together more and more just to edify and encourage one another and to spur one another on to good works, you know, and just be that encouragement for one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he is coming soon. He is coming very soon. And I am watching and I am waiting and I'm saying, Lord, fill us up. Fill us up with fresh oil. Fill us up, Lord God, today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I magnify your name. <laughs> I magnify your name, Lord. You are wonderful. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, I may have to cut this off because she can't seem to, to get in. So I'm going to stop this and send a new link. Praise. Oh, yep. The, the, the recording is started and we praise God. <laughs> this yeah. is what, take two? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm so grateful. This is the Vine and Branch uh, Ministries and we're called the Living Stone Testimonial today. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. Today we have a very special and honored guest, my my daughter, <laughs> and we just want to open in prayer. Father, I thank you for this new day. I thank you that your mercies are new in this day for us today, Lord. And we want to bless your name, and we, we come to worship you and worship you, Lord, with all our hearts, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength, Lord. We're grateful, Father, that you picked us up from the ashes and you brought us in, Lord, to your kingdom and and Lord, that you made us new creatures in Christ Jesus today, that the old has passed away, Lord, and you're doing a new and wonderful work in our lives. And Lord, we just can't wait to see everything that you're going to be doing, Lord, in the days to come. And we just want to bless your name, Lord God. I thank you for my daughter and the transformation that has come in her life by your spirit, Lord. And we give you all glory and praise. This testimony, Lord, is for your glory. And I pray that many lives will be touched and changed, Lord, and encouraged today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hey, I so, had, I had an, uh, uh, thing. You could call it uh, free at three. <laughs> free at three. That's a good idea. You know, they go live at five. <laughs> live at five. Free at three. That's, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, what's going on? Not much. I chose a different room this time. It's more light. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I know you, you sent me your testimony. It's pretty um, extensive. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm just looking it up here. Uh, so where do you want to start? Uh, From the beginning. <laughs> In the yeah. beginning, God created Shanna. No. <laughs> huh. And then the, and look, no. <laughs> look at that beautiful smile, too. <laughs> I brushed my teeth today, so. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, I figured uh, I would just read what I had already written because it's just, it's easier. That and, it keep, it, and it keeps you on track, right? <laughs> you don't go down these rabbit holes. <laughs> well, I, yeah, and it's not as sporadic, right? It's pretty much straight to the point. So Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll just start. Uh, I'm reading from my phone, so. Um, a life spent on the run has given me the hand of perspective to hold, and it's a lovely hand when held in understanding. Sometimes the choice to make the right decision is more painful than living in what was wrong. Self-examination, a terrifying experience when you choose to see the ugly in you through the eyes of another. Not only see it, but allow perspective to teach you how to handle it with caution so your next move doesn't kill you. The beauty of life is painful, it's messy. Learning for myself that looking at my heart with the desire to do better makes that pain turn to insight, giving me an understanding as to the why and the how. I grew up with opposite ends of the spectrum. My mother working out her own salvation, gener generationally in love with God, and my father, the son of German immigrants, involved in all sorts of unmentional activity. Five years mm -hmm. of captivity, and my mother broke free, infuri infuriating my controlling father, hate and love, unconditional and conditional. It was the theft of my innocence at age five when I really started to become aware of what hate and love was, except no one knew what had happened to me. So the reality of it became tainted. I felt mm. an uncomfortable expectation to keep pursuing or allowing sexual experiences. Unable to comprehend what I was going through, the molestation continued again when I was six and then when I was almost 10. The last time was a hit at home an exposure no one was equipped to face because it was my brother who was involved. I was a little girl still trying to figure out the essential skills needed for life, mm -hmm. hopefully molding my teen years with a billboard that screams broken. It was division in the spectrum that led to doubting question as questions as to the authenticity, authenticity? Um, of authenticity. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, of who God is, along with the innocence stolen from me and the rejection from my father, the material used to finish construction on a complete marathon against godliness. At 15, my bottle exploded and I started chasing a high, becoming the glue holding my reflection together so mm -hmm. I didn't have to go through the reality of hurt. By 19, I knew I couldn't handle any more of the evident hand the enemy uses to take a broken person and use it against them, which led me to Freedom Village, pregnant with my second daughter, addicted to drugs and selling myself to gain them. It was there that my relationship with God began to grow rapidly. With my past behind me and my God before me, I finally felt ready. Released on good behavior eight months later and ready to mend relationships, I felt it easier to talk around my father. I found, I found he was softening a little and accepting me for who I was becoming, mending our relationship, till my world got rocked by his death. I couldn't understand the why. My feet got moving and I began to run. I had once again found myself stuck in the revolving door of addiction. This time though, I not only destroyed my life, I was destroying the life of my family. I desperately yearned to see whole. Married at 21 and five years later with three children and a bad drug habit. Shame, mm. the ever present emotion that keeps weights bound to, to me so heavy the chains felt as if they would never break. One night, I was desperately screaming in a hotel room for God to kill me, sniffing repetitively lines of cocaine, lost and feeling utter despair. A feeling of complete abandonment had washed over me. My heart beating out of my chest with downpours of tears flowing from my eyes. I was frantically trying 
to grasp to the re grasp to the reality I could not reach. When my husband found me, I collapsed in his exhausted arms and knew that it was finally over. My life was a shattered mirror, broken in a million pieces on the floor, beaming at me all the painfully wrong decisions I've made and life altering decisions that were made towards me. Each piece showing my shameful past, making it unbearable to look at my reflections. I had so many scars from being cut that it was hard to see who I really was. Those reflections showed who I had become and it wasn't beauty I was seeing. So I did what I knew best and picked up those pieces and tried to take them back together. When I picked up the mirror to see how beautiful I had become, it fell, smashing to the ground, the tape I depended on in the natural disintegrating, each piece broken a million times more, revealing once again the very evident hand the enemy uses to grasp the brokenhearted and use their brokenness to rip them to shreds. This time mm -hmm. though, I finally got the courage to kneel down and peek at the smallest piece I could find. My heart stopped in surrender. I seen a love like no other, all my past completely wiped away. Not one ounce of shame or guilt connected to what should have been life killing me memories. This love began, began to wrap itself around me in the most comforting way. Mm -hmm. This love was holding me through every self-destructive step I took waiting very patiently for me to look past the chains that had me bound so tight. This love is Jesus. He gently pulled me back up without Amen. a word, not even a shake of, shake of a finger. He stood there with arms wide open, tears falling like raindrops, saying, my princess, it's been an agonizing wait for me watching you go through so much hurt. Let me show you how I've been there every step in every way. Let's mend these shattered pieces together, both you and I. We will make a new mirror out of the old, one that the reflection it bears will be one you can't wait to see every day. I love you, my daughter, and I don't ever want you to leave me again. The beauty of grace is that it makes life unfair. The freedom allowed through it, through it isn't always easy. Our minds are a battle, battlefield, waging war against our emotions. History has a proven track record and not one thing I do will separate me from God's love. Not everyone Amen. walks at the same time. Some lessons in life are harder to learn than others. That's why we are being made perfect till the day of Jesus Christ. Being able to let go of the principle of hurt brought in humility, giving me an understanding that his, love hold, his loving hands will hold me through every choice I make or choice made towards me. Grace is love, and love is freedom with no expectations. Pages aren't always easy to read through hindsight, but I have mm. faith that Jesus isn't done with me yet. Yeah, and that's the end. <laughs> it seems long when you look at it, but it's not really that long. No, no. <laughs> yeah. These, these uh, testimonials are usually an hour long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you... I know like we brought you to church all the time growing up and you were always seemed to be in church with us. But when did you realize that you, you needed a savior, like that, that you, when did you find Jesus? Like, like when did I become real with him? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. It's been so sporadic. Um, so I gave my heart to the Lord at Bible camp when I was younger, I think maybe seven. Um, but, you know, circumstances uh, just, it didn't go in that direction. There was just so many situations, so many choices made towards me that uh, I didn't, I guess, really understand. <laughs> right. Like, but I don't know, like, I guess now would be the time in the past year where I've been the most authentic with God. Uh, before, you know, I, I would have these downfalls and slip up and then come back to God and it would be cloud nine experience. And then all like I, I would just get flooded with things and I couldn't handle them. I, I, I mean, I could have, <laughs> but you could have, but you didn't have the tools. I didn't. Yes. I didn't have the tools to do so. And, uh, 
now, I guess in the last year, God's really been working with me. I've been allowing him to work with me. I right. should say. <laughs> He's always wanted to work with me. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's just been like the authenticity said it right. <laughs> yeah. Authenticity. Authenticity. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just been so real. And even on my darkest days, it's not like, God, where are you? It's, it's God, I need you. And I know you're there no matter what, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's the thing about faith is that it's not based on how we feel. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the word of God says he'll never leave us or forsake us. So we believe that no matter what we're going through and what we see and how we feel, it's a, it's a step of faith, right? We just believe that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So you have three children. Three. Yes. <laughs> three beautiful children. Amariah will soon be 16 in October. I know. I know. I just remember her as a little child, you know, just romping around and doing her thing. Yeah. And now, you know, when she just came to visit us for my mother's 80th and she's like a woman, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of scary in a way, right? Because she's going to be like so getting out there, <laughs> getting out there soon on her own. And it's like, whoa, yeah. she's <laughs> but you've done a good job raising her. And, you know, she's, she's um, pretty smart. You know, she knows, knows things and yeah. stuff and. You know, (laughs) everything at this point. (laughs) Yeah. Well, when you become almost 16 year old, you you know everything. Right. And then when you get 21, you look back and you say, well, I think my parents knew a lot more than I do. (laughs) Yeah. And I always keep that in my mind, you know, because there's lots of things that I didn't agree with when I was younger that you you said or whatever you did. And I look back and I'm like, wow, you know, my mom was actually right. So when Amariah gets on these, like, she's right, I just say, okay, Amariah, because I know one day she'll look back just like, hopefully most everybody, every child will do and say, you know, I think my mom was right. (laughs) Yeah, she wasn't, she wasn't so stupid as I thought she was. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And as Aaliyah, she's quite the worshiper she loves to worship and yeah praise god and i remember when we were selling our puppets i remember at the street fest yeah and and she in the booth beside us there was a woman that came in with a sore leg or or something and they were there was a it was a prayer booth and she had come in for prayer and uh azalea right away she runs over there and she lays hands on the woman's leg and, and she starts praying for her, like yeah. with just without even thinking that love and that compassion in her, just worshiping the Lord in that way. I'll never forget that visual, you know, her heart for the Lord. Yeah. And little August, he's um, quite the fix, fixer upper, always wants to get in there and fix things. And oh, he's so <laughs> smart. Like he's, yeah. just, and he, he's a little hyper, but. Um, I had a meeting last night with my boss and she said, she's like, is he really hyper or is he just acting like a kid would have acted when we were younger, you know, without, because now kids are just like glued to their phones. So that's what we expect them to be so calm and not like, yeah, exaggerated, right? Lethargic and yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I always say, oh, you're so hyper. And like some days I just want to wring his neck, you know, cause I'm like, ah, but that's not <laughs> my frustration. Like, remember when I, when you called the other day and we were making muffins and I was like, oh my goodness, August, it just won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, it was but my frustration. I was tired. Right. Yeah. That's normal. I think as kids, you guys were all rambunctious and yeah. inquisitive and, and, when I would say, don't do that. Well, why? Why can't I do that? <laughs> well, you can't stand on the table and jump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't have all the TV and the phones and the internet and all that. Nope. Stuff. I oh, said, get out oh. there. Get out there. Those were the days where when the street lights come on, you knew you had to come home, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. We would play, get all the neighbors together and play a game of chase or something, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And kids could be kids, yeah. you know, you weren't dumbed down by technology and yeah. all the paraphernalia that's out there nowadays. Yeah. So, so what was the, what, what are your struggles now as a Christian? Like for our listeners today, like uh, they may be going through some struggles right now. What, what are some of the things that you struggle with as a Christian, you know, where, where you're, you're, you really need to call on the Lord for, to be, to overcome. <laughs> Does my mother-in-law count? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I like, I guess, what do I struggle with now? Um, well, I know God's really been teaching me a lot about grace this past year. Uh, and I, and I, you know, I really struggled with that. Just allowing people to be, <laughs> to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because I'm on this new wave or I'm on, I'm excited for the Lord. It's like, well, now everybody's got to change and everybody's got to be excited, but they're not like, they're not at the same, uh, I don't want to say level, but like at the same stage in their, their walk as I am. Right. 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 Well, we all deal with things differently and God reaches everybody differently. And right. like, I guess it's been a real struggle for me <laughs> to just maintain that, to not mm -hmm. allow that. Well, why aren't they doing it? Or why can't they see it from my perspective? Or don't they know that this is the way, you know, to not be right in that way. That can be a little self-righteous too, right? Yep. Yeah. Getting, getting, you know, I, I did that a lot too. Remember? Yeah. You know, I, it's like you, you'd be calling me up and, 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 you know, sharing things with me and right away I have to be in there and sharing scriptures and saying, well, you need to do this and this. And, and it's like, and then one day you just said, mom, just, just, I just want to share with you. You don't have to be my counselor. You don't have to be my, you know, all this all the time. Right. And, and I'm like, I got it. I finally got it. You know? Yeah. 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 And I think the Lord did a lot of healing between us two. Mm hmm you know, just recently, I think the Lord is bringing us closer and yeah. doing that healing in us. And it's a process. It is a process. You know, the Lord, there's layers yeah. where the Lord takes the layers off, right? And then he heals one aspect and then he moves to another area. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's all in order as to what he sees fit. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like... Lord, why aren't you doing this in this area? This is where I think I need it the most. And he's like, wait a second. Like, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> he's like, I want to deal with this first because this is what I see needs to be done. <laughs> right, right, right. You go through steps because he can't deal with this area until he deals with this area. Yeah. Right, because they're so entwined. But there's always a root that he tries to dig out that root and then he can take off the little tiny things that whatever you know what i mean <laughs> yeah who's that it's Brayden. What's oh hi Brayden. Oh. that's her <laughs> husband for all y'all <laughs> <laughs> it's his birthday today <laughs> yes happy birthday he's what 30 or or 34 because i'm in my jesus year so <laughs> <laughs> so you've been free from drugs for four years now right free from heavy drugs yeah uh, heavy drugs yeah november 14th was my praise the lord year. yeah heaven went back god made me a promise he said i will not tempt you in that area again like or test you yeah like test you yeah because he like, doesn't tempt us but yeah yeah he he said he will not like that part was over with and i even like it's this whole COVID thing. It's been really hard on everybody. Right. And yeah, like even in that, like within that, I've, I've stopped walking with God for a bit. And, uh, you know, I was given that op opportunity, not like given the opportunity, but like around, uh, the heavy drugs. And I was yeah. like, 
the heck? I didn't even have a desire to do it. Praise I, the Lord. I was like, get out of here. Like, what are you doing bringing that stuff around me? <laughs> you know? And God's just like, I, you know, I made a promise to you. Yeah. I always hold a hold to that promise. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we, we can believe his promises. Yeah. We can believe them. They're for the righteous. They're for us today. His word never returns void, you know, yeah. and, and I see it worked out in your life. All the prayers and everything. He's been so faithful in your life. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what God's doing in your life now. You know, he's, he's performing his word in your life. He's making you take, doing that process of sanctification. And that's one of the, the hardest things I think for is for God to take something that someone that is unholy, yeah. put them in an unholy world, make them holy and keep them holy. Right. Yeah. That yeah. process. Yeah. You know, and a lot of leg work from our part. <laughs> well, it is work, right? It, because the, the Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And it's a process where we were saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. You know, it's, it's that daily walk with the Lord, making those choices. And it is a choice to choose when you get up in the morning. I choose to walk with you, Lord. I choose to love you. I choose to, to stay abiding in you, you know. And when the enemy comes, I choose to submit to you and resist the devil. And he has to flee. Yeah. 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 And, and we... We miss it sometimes, right? We miss it. Yeah. But that's his grace. Like you said, his grace works in our life. Yeah. I mean, he's not, God's not going to condemn us because we forgot to open our, our Bible in the morning, you know? Right, right. <laughs> he's Amen. Just, hey, you know, like, like, I understand. I know you better than you know yourself. <laughs> I think that's in Romans 8. There's therefore no more condemnation. Yeah. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are not walking in the flesh, but in the spirit, right? Yeah. 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 So, wow. So what, where are you now? Like, what are you doing? Like, oh, I want you to share your testimony about how you got into working with Freedom Village. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, like I read, um, I, I went to this place, Freedom Village, I mean, if you're from America, you probably heard about it. Pastor Fletcher Brothers. Freedom um, Village, USA. Well, a good, good morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they closed down. Well, I guess they didn't close down, but their dynamics are different now. Um, and uh, <laughs> so I, ha I clean houses. I'm a cleaner. Um, and I guess my boss... Uh, for the cleaning job, she was in Tim Hortons and this, my other boss for Freedom Village uh, was behind her and said, you know what, she'd really been praying and she's like, I think I, I, I need a cleaner and it just so happened she pulled in behind my boss for the cleaning job and she's like, wow, she, so she called them up and she's like, you know, can I get a cleaner and whatever and, and she's like, yeah, sure and I got sent there and uh, my first <laughs> time cleaning there, I was leaving and I seen a race car in her garage that had the Freedom Village sticker on it. Like not the one from the USA, but I guess their new one. And um, yeah, I, so the next time I went, I was just hoping and praying like, God, like, is she going to be there? I want to talk to this person. I want to see what, you know, what their association is. Cause it's exciting. Like I'm, not many people I know know of Freedom Village and mm -hmm. the odds that she lives seven minutes up the road from me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I asked her, I said, what's your association with Freedom Village? Like I went there, you know, back in whatever year and I had my daughter there and she's like, oh, I work for them. And uh, she's the executive director. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't like, like, I didn't know. I thought it was just like, like pastor brothers and all the staff you know i didn't know right yeah ended into canada and anyway so she she said uh she said yeah we took it over from uh the americans and or well like the american side and uh we opened up in canada as our own unit and mm -hmm. i was like 
that's pretty cool. So I was scrubbing her shower and she comes upstairs and she said, uh, would you like a job? And I was like, well, like my immediate response was, of course, you know, like this, my heart since I was 10 <laughs> was like, I, I wanted to own, I wanted to help heal the hurting, like own. Self. Right. My plan was, my plan was to eventually have a big enough property where I could have a facility where people could come and get help. But that's my plan, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I said, well, you know, like, I got to talk to my husband about it and uh, see what he says. And because we had just gotten back together after being separated for almost a year. And um, she's like, yeah, yeah, no worries. I totally understand. And so I talked to my husband and I was all excited about it. Like, oh, and this could be the beginning. And I was like, oh, finally, you know, my dreams are coming true and all this stuff. And he said, go for it. So I called her or I think I texted her and I said, yeah, he said yes. And it's been like, I don't like, I just stuff envelopes. I do a lot of like the stuffing of the envelopes, mailing. The clerical stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then she had come to me like probably six months after working there. And she said, Hey, we got this blog going on. Uh, would you like to write once a month for it? And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> like, what am I <laughs> I gonna say no she's like like there were months I didn't even work and I got paid anyway so I was like well I'm kind of like I'm not at their mercy but you know what I mean like I just I've like it's like I I could have said no but I didn't really want to because I yeah I, like wanted to respect them right so yeah anyways all nervous and I didn't I like I didn't know what to write about and I'm asking her a million questions and she's like just write whatever God leads you to write it can be about your perspective on parenting through COVID. It can be, you know, what you've learned in life. It can be about like anything, how a tree grows, you know, just, <laughs> just you just write whatever your heart, um, your heart produces, whatever God produces in your heart, you just write it. And I was like, wow, okay. So I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> So I'm researching like what is a blog and I never even read a blog before but it turns out I read a blog before and it was just like yeah and uh well you were stepping out in faith yeah totally in faith because it was uncharted waters you know oh yeah and God wanted to stretch you but he gives you the desires of your heart yeah. and that's what and it's his desires put in your heart so those desires to open up a, a home to help troubled youth and, you know, to, to help those people that have gone through what you've gone through. Those are his desires in you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really believe that. And this was the beginning of him stretching you and moving you out into those places, oh, you know? Yeah. It's been slow. I was so excited at the beginning. Like I'm still excited about it, but now I'm understanding why he didn't just go full force with it at the beginning. Right. So, right. I was all excited. Oh, and this is going to be like, I've been waiting for this moment forever. And like, you know, God's going to use me. And it's like, so I was expecting within the next like month or two, I'd be going into people's houses, meeting with all these children. <laughs> <laughs> it's still, I haven't been and COVID too. It's sort of put a damper on things, but the restrictions. He's training you right now. He's training you up. Yeah. And, and yeah. now I understand why, you know, like I needed to go, they paid for me to go through therapy. I've been in therapy for four months, not just me, but my children, which is pretty cool. Christian therapists and the, the healing, the understanding I've, I've received through that is like, it's phenomenal. I went through a, a cognitive processing therapy because like everything I had been through living on the streets and just like the, my rocky life, I guess the instability really played a role on my thought processes. Right. And, you know, I could read the Bible as much as I wanted, but it was like, well, why am I still feeling stuck? <laughs> you know, but now mm -hmm. like, we get, I understand why. And uh, yeah. And I just, I'm finishing my last session on Wednesday and my boss comes to me 
uh, I think it was last week we had the meeting and she said, Hey, can we meet up? I bought it. I got a new office now and I'll show you the old one. We'll go to the new one. The old one was only 450 square feet and he wanted to increase. She was paying $800 a month and he wanted to increase it to 1600. Um, and she said for 450 square feet, that's not much. So she went home, she looked online and she couldn't find anything. And she's like, okay, God, I'm going to leave it in your hands. And the next morning mm -hmm. she again, and she found a spot, uh, right on, uh, the busy road in where we live. And, uh, it's got two boardrooms, a little mini kitchen, an office, a bathroom, and it's only 1100 a month and hydros included. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. And she said, I'm going to give you a key and uh, I like come up with, with classes that you want to do things that, you know, we could do with the kids and not just the kids, because our new focus now is to work with the families as well as. Right. <laughs> and uh, you got to fix the whole unit, right? It's the whole unit. Yep. Yeah. And the family. So we're in the pro it's still slow. It's been about three years. And um, now with the restrictions lifting, we've got a little bit more leeway in what we can do. And uh, yeah, so she just said, I'm going to give you a key and you can, you know, you can come here, you can, you know, we'll have Bible studies and you can work Praise God. now, you know, if you need a break, <laughs> all those things. And she just said, come up with a plan and we'll go from there. And I was like, well, this is pretty cool. And it's like, I feel like God's really honoring my commitment at this point, you know, like he sees, cause I haven't given up. And even, you know, like, even when you could have looked at my life and been like, well, you're still doing this. So you must not be tight with God. God's like, don't pay attention to those people. I see you, you know, I see right. you and you're sitting with me and I'm sitting with you during those moments. And I really, I put in a lot of work <laughs> And God, I think God's really, he's honoring that, you know? Yeah, he, he says that he will reward your yeah. faithfulness and he rewards, you know, that, that in you, so. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting. And, and I understand now, you know, why he didn't step me out right at the beginning. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, because me. pride comes before a fall. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> because we tend to want to do it in our own strength, right? We get so excited. We run ahead of God yeah. and we do. And I've been there so many times. Okay. God, will, God will give me an idea or something or, you know, to move out in an area. And, and I just run ahead of them and I say, okay, yes. I grab everything around me and I, off I go. But yeah. then the Lord says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, are you, aren't you forgetting someone? You know, <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's God's, God's ways are not our ways all the time, right? His thoughts are not our thoughts. And, and so we have to commit. We make our plans and then we commit them to the Lord, right? And he directs our path. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a cool experience. And I'm just, you know, at the beginning when I started working, as excited as I was, and I was just eager and wanting to get out there, I was like, I just... God just kept telling me it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow. So, you know, I just sort of, I didn't really understand why. And I'm thinking like, what the heck God, like <laughs> <laughs> so many years for this opportunity. And well, because we live in such a, an instant society. Yeah. Everything is at your fingertips. Everything's instant. You go to the, the takeout places and you can go through the drive through everything's instant, 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 you know, at the press of a button. And, and that's what we're used to. Yeah. So convenience. <laughs> and we portray that in our relationship with God sometimes, right? Yeah. We want that instant answer to prayer. We want these instant things to happen, but it, God does not work on our timetable. <laughs> and it's the last half hour of faith. You know, <laughs> that last half hour that gets us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he orchestrated that whole thing. And like, and she, like, n not knowing me just took a chance. I don't know. I never really asked her if she heard from God or like prayed about it or whatever. But 
like it's just the way God orchestrated all of that. And now we're in the process of building a team up. So praise the Lord. Yeah, I've got uh, my friends, Danielle and Cassidy, they're marriage coaches. So we had a meeting last night with them and mm-hmm. I just sat back. I listened, you know, and I'm, I'm an observer and, and they're what she gave her mission, like her, I guess, mission statement or her vision uh, for Freedom Village or God's vision, I should say. And they're like, they didn't have any questions except for like a, he, Cassidy's like, I just have a comment and whatever. And then he's, he's shared his heart and what God's really been putting on his heart. And they're like connected. (laughs) And I was like, wow, like, this is pretty cool. (laughs) It was a a divine appointment from the Lord. Yeah. You y'all been set up. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, they're like, well, when do you see us starting? And she said, honestly, I have a family right now that could use you guys. Yeah, so it's pretty cool the way God's just working. And who would have thought we've been living here for five years now, you know, so much has happened in those five years. But like, we didn't know why we moved out here. We moved out here and I got this acre property with this big house. And I'm like, okay, God, like this is going to be used for you. You know, like I got the property, yeah. put stuff over on this side. And like, you know, I got all my vision in my head. And like, it just, it turns out the, uh, like not the other way, but whatever right (laughs) yeah it's pretty cool but he's god sees the end from the beginning right and the beginning from the end and he knows and he's just taking you slowly along and putting everything in place and he's rearranging things and getting all the furniture in place and you know and yeah bringing Bringing the right people (laughs) yeah well, and your husband, I mean, Brayden, he's, he's uh, slowly, you know, the Lord's doing a work in his heart. Yeah. And we, we believe that the Lord is really, you know, touching his heart and speaking to him. Yeah. And he's coming on board and, and he supports you. Oh, he's, you know, he yeah. supports you 100%. And yeah, I mean, like now... And, you know, as like, I just wanted so badly to own a facility and to let people into my home. I didn't even consider him in the process. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, okay, this is my dream. So we're going to do it, you know. And I did the same thing with yeah. Richard. With, and I, I yeah. think God was just like, wait a second, like you're to honor your husband. Right. And so, you know, that door just sort of got closed. And and I understand it now, right? But yeah. one door closes, another one opens, and God definitely opened another door. <laughs> because because you're one, right? Yeah. And he's if he's dealing with you, he's dealing with your husband. Yeah. And and your husband's not where you are, so he has to work on Braden and you know, because you have to be in unity. Yeah. So so sometimes the Lord will hold things until Braden comes along, right? Yeah. Because he's tender and loving and he's not going to rip you here. And you know what I mean? And leave Braden in the dust to eat your dust. Right. <laughs> Cause that'll just create bitterness and, you yeah. know, and it'll work against you. And that's not God's heart whatsoever. But I remember when, remember growing up and I'm, when the Lord gave me the vision to that, I was going to move to Cochrane and he was going to start using me. Yes. In healing and deliverance ministry and all this stuff. And, and and remember, I used to like always say, well, we're moving to Cochrane. Come on, like next year we're going to. And, and I would always be manipulating him and trying to get him to to f- see my vision and telling him what he's going to do, you know, and what the Lord's doing with us. And but it wasn't even the time. It wasn't the place. And. Yeah. And finally, the Lord just said, enough. So, and he started dealing with my heart and saying, you know what? This, I'm doing the work. I'm, this is my vision. It's, so you have to work on my timetable. So there came a time where I just gave it to the Lord and said, okay, Lord, whenever you're ready. Yeah. And look, lo and behold, where are we now? Exactly. We're in Cochrane, Ontario, <laughs> where the Lord, and we're working in healing and deliverance ministry and yeah. teaching and, you know, and it, it and it wasn't the way I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't like this big 
ministry on on you know buildings and all the staff and everything it's it's not the way i i assumed it would be but the lord has a plan and his plan is going to come to pass in your life yeah. you just stay the course and you remain faithful to him and he comes first in yeah. everything right yeah. yeah we're gonna are we gonna mess up sometimes yes we're gonna mess up sometimes big time but but he's there for us yeah. and when we just know he's there for us just by our faith we believe in him and the holy spirit just he does everything because it's not by our might nor our power but by the power of the lord right yeah 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 he's really been uh, <clears throat> uh be still and know that i am god has been the theme for the last couple weeks for me <laughs> yeah and it's in our weakness right he gives us that strength his strength yeah in our weakness yeah he glories in our weakness <laughs> yes yeah and so all the kids are on board and i know amariah starting to really um be the little entrepreneur yeah you know she's starting to get the vision to to you know use her gifts and talents to bless others and making those little mushroom people for the marketplace and yeah and she's getting custom orders now it's pretty cool that's it. so the blessing by your obedience the uh, the lord is um not only sanctifying your husband through your prayers and your faithfulness to the lord because the word does say that that the husband is sanctified through the wife right yeah. the unbelieving husband or whatever however that goes exactly <laughs> um but not only that but your children are blessed as well yeah. you know through through you and your prayers and your commitment to the lord yeah yeah i see it i mean with amariah and and this new opportunity like i'm a market person i love supporting my community at the market it's just like that's the first thing i found when we moved out here was a market that i could go to so i could support my community right and I became friends with uh, one of the mushroom vendors there. And the one year he's like, hey, I gave him a candle for Christmas. And he's like, can you make these like so I can sell them? And I was like, OK, like, I guess. And that connection just sort of got made. And then uh, I guess he he had a falling out with somebody and one of his workers. And so Amariah, he said, hey, how old's your daughter? And I was like 15. And he's like well would she mind helping me at the other market that he does and i was like for sure like i didn't even talk to like I asked. <laughs> you didn't even ask her <laughs> i did i asked her i said hey this opportunity came up i know you're like you want to make some money you've got like ideas for your room you want to fulfill and all this stuff and i said it's a good opportunity and so she's been there helping him almost every saturday i uh, not for three weeks because she was up north and my car's not been the greatest but she's there now but like, I'm telling you, like, like, I, I can't like, he's just the best person for her. It's like, he's so patient and he's understanding and he's a really good teacher. And like, she's really uh, created such a bond with him and not just him, but all the other people at the market. And like, yeah. I, was really praying. I was like, okay, like we can't do any activities cause they're, you know, they don't, they don't have their thing and whatever. And we can't like I can't get them involved in anything because like here all the churches youth groups were closed down and all that stuff and then this right. came up and I was like thank you God and it's done wonders for her <laughs> and now she's selling all this stuff and you know and he even said in the summertime when because it's only during the winter months because he doesn't have all the other produce that he would sell in the summertime he's like she can even come and do practice her artwork and do self portraits for people. <laughs> nice that's so cool praise god yeah so the blessings are trickling down to your children <laughs> yeah praise the lord and and it's given me an opportunity uh, like a better opportunity because um now through amariah i've been able to help him you know he's COVID's just got everybody down, you know, it's e like it's really easy to get depressed and mental health is on like like just decreasing all over the board all over the, the world and it's 
given me the opportunity to reach him, you know, to help. Him. Right. Well, there's a lot of fear out there. Oh, yeah. A lot of people living in fear right now. Oh, it's so sad. What's going on in Ottawa right now? I watched a video and this lady, they're, they're playing worship music in the background and this lady's filming their eyes. I think I posted on Facebook and I, I, I can't even talk about it without crying because like these police officers, they don't even want to be there. They don't even want to do this. Yeah. And see it in their eyes. Like they, they're crying. They're like, we, we just, we have to do this and we don't even want to do it. Oh, that's just crazy what's going on. <laughs> well, we just pray that the Lord has his will in that situation and hearts and lives that the church would really, really be involved in that and, be be a visual out in the public and you know just sharing the gospel sharing the love of christ and praying with people and being that testimony you know for the lord yeah. shining the light in right now up there in ottawa yeah. we pray for the officers we pray for their families we pray for the government you know that the lord would really move move in the government and and touch their hearts soften their hearts yeah. And that they will come into righteousness and and people would take a stand for the truth, yeah. you know, and, and, and come against the lies and the fear in Jesus' name. That this spirit of fear that's rampant today, we just take authority over that. Yeah. People will come to, to faith in Christ and they will have peace in their heart. People need Jesus. Yes. Ultimately, people need Jesus. Oh, mom, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm watching all these like live feeds and stuff. And people are saying they're like, we didn't believe in God until we came to this. And now, you know, like where we believe there is a God, this one lady, she's like, I was an atheist before all this. She's like, and now, you know, I see God, I see him. Like, I'm like, I, I see him working in these people because it's right. Just, Praise God. It's just such a dumb awesome group of people and you've got the ones who are playing like the secular music and then you've got the group that's playing right beside them the worship music and it's just like people are just getting set free and it's just it's so cool to watch i just i don't know it's a part of history that we're living in right now it's pretty cool. right I right there, but i can't be well we know the lord is coming back soon we know that we're living in the end times and uh we just pray for this generation, you know, yeah. that they will, the people like, like your testimony, because people are turning to alternative things now because they have all this stuff on them, right? Through the COVID and they don't know how to cope. And, yeah. and, and you know, so I pray that, that your testimony will, will just be a loud trumpet. The Lord will take this testimony and people will, the Lord will lead people across this channel to hear your testimony. And, and the Lord will use this to set many hearts free Yeah, because it, people need to come out of this bondage and, and see the face of Christ and yeah. see Jesus. Yeah. Well, I think this is where we'll end. And, uh, you're just such a blessing to so many. You're a blessing to me. <laughs> and I thank the Lord for, for that restoration that he's doing in our lives, in our family. You know, the Lord's been, been doing a restoration in our family, and I thank him for that. Yeah. So um, did you want to close in prayer? I know you're not used to praying in public, and, but... Um, Can you do it this time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you've, you've done such a transforming work in our lives, and it's all you, Lord, that we weren't even looking for you, Lord God, but you came and you found us, Lord. Oh, we just worship you and we adore you, Father. I pray, Father, for the hearts and lives that will come across this channel, Lord, that you will lead and guide them, Lord, to... To you, Father, ultimately, Lord, that you will set them free, Lord, set the captives free, break off the chains, Lord, and set the oppressed free today. In Jesus' name, they will see you high and lifted up. Father, I pray a blessing over Shanna's family, over my grandchildren, 
in her home, Lord, that your anointing and your presence and your peace will always be in her home, Lord God. Continue to use her for your glory, for your name's sake, Lord. May she shine as, as, as a shining light and be the salt in the earth. And wherever she walks, Lord God, will be holy ground, Lord. Your presence will always be with her and go with her, Lord. And bless everyone, Lord, her, her boss, the cleaning, cleaning agent boss, Lord. Bless them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we just give you the glory, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, have a blessed day and happy birthday, Brayden. And yeah, <laughs> and uh, I hope you're doing something special. Donations okay. can be sent to my email address. No, I'm just joking. No, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, <laughs> PayPal. No, <laughs> GoFundMe. No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, thank you for for coming on today and being a blessing to the vine and branches ministry yeah no problem <laughs> well have a great day and yes you too bye everybody bye <laughs> well we'll end this now oh i gotta stop the recording uh -oh. okay i just figured out how to do the recording Bible with the Holy Spirit showing you